Welcome to Leader Lessons Now podcast with weekly conversations on leadership lessons for new leaders to develop their self-awareness and help those they lead to a better future. Now, here's your host. Welcome back, everyone. Drinking my coffee here, which is necessary to stay in the zone for doing Agile right. Just finished chapter seven, titled Agile Processes and Technology. A good chapter. It seems like this would really be a CIO chapter uh, in that we're diving deep into technology as an IT or IS infrastructure of a company. And then the processes, you know, I I think uh, it's about trying to tie that out you with operational processes, but just sort of like how processes in an organizational um, infrastructure work. So it starts with CEO of Royal Bank of Scotland in late 2013. Uh, Seeing the landscape changing, uh, a lot of digital uh, competitors coming into the market, facing stronger headwinds and seeing margins slim. So he had to reorient himself to what the goals were for the company, which was a customer-centric core purpose. And he saw that he could better serve the customers by moving his traditional mortgage business into a digital home buying and ownership business. This would provide a, a higher quality of customer experience. But of course, in doing that, it required replacing the siloed way of working in the business and changing the organization as a whole in terms of its uh, defined defined value. So it had to focus, or at least he put into place, seven journeys of addressing the customer need. These included large, complex journeys, such as get a mortgage, and mid-sized ones, such as report and manage fraud, and small ones, such as replace a debit card. I thought that was a really good approach and one that that probably it can be repeated in that let's say you're just trying to get into an agile mindset into your company think about setting up these agile teams in diversity of focus and in large mid-size and then small so that you can see where the bottlenecks might be in the process of your organization in terms of trying to move a project forward. So I thought that was a a really good approach. He talked about, uh, you know, being able to, to, in doing that, being able to see that the greatest potential to provide the most value to customers was in actually the, the most complex and large journey, which was getting a mortgage. But he stayed oriented on organizing around the customer journey as the heart of the model and the mortgage application experience in that um, he was able to get sort of two-week sprints with customer feedback at the end of each one to stay oriented on whether or not what they were delivering was, was relevant to the customer needs. At the end of this part, it gets really positive about you know, how they moved to, they were the first paperless mortgage application bank and 90% of all applica- applications became paperless. Uh, there was growth all over the place. Uh, and then the success, you know, built on top of the success. So I don't know, it felt really positive there. And then went into the next part, which was titled The Challenge of Processes and Technologies. So I think uh, it's doing a good job trying to make sure that we stay balanced in that there's some really tough work to do. They can have some positive outcomes, but the tough work shouldn't be discounted in terms of how challenging it really is. One place it doesn't dive into that I wish it would is, you know, the people component of change behavior is at the heart of the challenges. So you, so, you know, here's a CEO who's challenged and changing his whole company and he's in charge of it. So that should give you some indication, you know, how difficult this really is. And I think the way the the book tries to encompass that idea is going back to bureaucracies. And again, you know, using that word a lot, 
but it's 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 trying to represent or symbolize that that bureaucracies like to stick with processes and technologies they have in place because changing them is is way too expensive and it's only when there's a real uh, breakdown that costs the organization a lot of money or is costing you know turnover but it, it, there's there's a financial uh, breakdown that they go behind closed doors and decide the specs and then come out with a new budget or new processes or new systems and ask all their employees just to work it out and of course you know that's that's still a chronic unbalanced approach that we're suggesting agile is trying to unravel or unpack within an organization and that's um you know that that should be an indicator that it's time to start integrating agility within your company but how you do that it seems to me that the book is recommending to do it in small steps and an experiment And again, another repetitive theme is needing to focus on customers, starting with the customers and working backwards. And and specifically in context of this uh, IT department or technology is to recognize that software engineers may think that what they're doing is more valuable than what the customers are giving them credit for. And so there's sort of a call out there. I did like uh, the idea of going back to taxonomy of teams is having these teams have a customer focus and defining that. In other words, uh, they use the example of U.S. health insurance company developed uh, five portfolios. Again, it seems really loose on what you call these agile teams, tribes, or you know whatever. But but in this case, they they called each of these uh, these portfolios had a had a designation or a definition, which was. One was about plan members, one was about employers, one was about healthcare providers and benefit brokers and employees. And so it's about defining your customer, whether it's internal or external. And if there's fragmentation in those, making sure you scope to the scale in order for clear focus to be visible for that agile team. And then making these small and frequent changes is a big uh, part of, of the agility necessary to stay synchronized to the end goal. In process innovation, there was an interesting idea around designing operations as modular capabilities. And I'm still struggling with the concept a little bit, except that it's one that it's given a task for identifying and contracting for space that will fill those specifications. So it has a defined purpose, but it's one that fills autonomous and doesn't interfere with other parts of the organization. So I I think it was a really small part that probably could be expanded upon. Uh, In terms of process innovation, the second is to encourage an open market competition for capabilities. I think that one I've seen a lot more, which is leveraging external suppliers to provide the service necessary to increase the capability for that project or the company to keep moving forward. So in other words, don't don't be so um, wrapped up in the idea that you have to innovate everything within your company. There are going to be some capabilities that you need to sort of bolt on from an external uh, supplier. And being good at that, I think, is a skill in the agile environment that's worth um, that's worth testing and building upon. Again, another another theme I really like in, it, in this chapter revisits is locating innovation teams within the organizational units uh, is a better way of uh, developing skills that are that need to be developed, but also just leveraging the skills that your team members already have. And it, and if you do that internally, and if you sort of grow the grassroots, which is the hardest thing to do, but if you can do that then the operations will accept it or adopt it much more easily because it's it's with people that they recognize. So I think that's a really good point. And then we, we dive into technology innovation, which it seems to really be specific on the software development side. And that's just some awareness that you may have some monolithic systems that can't be improved upon quickly. That's worth recognizing. Uh, you may have excessive specialization that are being sort of engulfed. These are software engineers that may be engulfed into larger teams. 
And I think the departmental silos um, is just sort of a product of traditional hierarchy anyways. So how you uh, bring those teams together, uh, that can be that can be best uh, performed as a blended agile team will be important. And again, that gets back to people. So we're sort of stating what you need to do, but how you go about that, I think still um, is still kind of up for interpretation as well. Uh, so it, so it ends with the agile wars and it's just a sort of a call out. And interestingly, it's sort of placed here, which I think is just to say it's at the end of the book. And that is a recognition that lean is a source of considerable confusion and debate. Uh, and, and so to, to sort of call out two legs under lean, one is the lean six Sigma, which is really for production systems, uh, versus the lean startup. The, and the lean six Sigma is about conformance to specifications, reducing eight sources of waste. Uh, but this isn't recommended for innovation. Uh, rather, the lean startup is is recommended, uh, you know, and is used often for product management, but should also be used for uh, methods of process. And I think uh, probably the the strongest sentence of the entire chapter is, "Better a culture gets at eliminating a vari- variability, the worse it gets at innovation." So again, we're trying to say that you it's required a balance is required. In that you need you need sort of six sigma principles to be in place to execute efficiently, but you also need variability and innovation with agility mindsets and agility approaches to be adaptable to ever changing customer demands. So this harmonizing of those two is the work of the agile organization. So the five key takeaways. Agile is for innovation, use it for processes and producing products and services and improving technology. Number two is standard operating procedures are important and those uh, need to be accepted and incorporated into the training and properly executing an agile deliverable. Number three is uh, use, use persistent cross-functional agile teams versus always like switching out the team members. Four is stay customer obsessed. And then five is a few companies have agile technology organizations. And so this is a place to really focus in on and having to overcome, you know, the the architecture to become more modular and helping engineers to become more versatile and breaking down functional silos will help your your team uh, build these this agile mindset. So that concludes chapter seven. Next chapter is our last chapter, uh, chapter eight, entitled Doing Agile Right. So looking forward to that one. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Leader Lessons Now. Check back weekly for new episodes. And please subscribe to this channel if you want to stay updated on the latest leadership lessons.